ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. This week, a very, very special guest. I got my guy, Cody Co on the podcast. How's it going? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me, yeah, man. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Uh, we were talking a little bit before the mics cut on. One, you were like one of 20 people that have seen my Netflix show. Flaked. Dude, that honestly, one of my favorite shows. It's so crazy Of all me. time. <laughs> no. I swear to God, man, when that shit came out, <laughs> uh, for some reason, the like... We I watched it like as a, like all my roommates sat down and watched it because they're like this oh because we lived in Venice that's of what it course, was and yeah. we're like dude there's a show it's set in Venice oh man this is gonna be it so we watched it and we just crushed the whole thing yo I went and ate at Jolino one time and it was so like by the way that was like my first show that was like my first you know like real thing and um there were these like these two women that were eating dinner next to me and I just heard them talk I was like they they were just like sh low key shit talking the show they're like I just watched this Netflix show called Flaked and like they actually shot in here and be like God it was god awful. <laughs> The acting, <laughs> and I just started dying laughing. You should have confronted them. Huh? Turn yeah, around. They turn like, around. Bitch, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was there last night, Jelena. At Jelena? Yeah, dude. I try to. I try to put everybody on that. And then if you're in a pinch for time, you got to go to GTA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one right beside it. Exactly. Yeah. And you know when we would take uh, breaks on set, I. I eat lunch there like literally every day. Cause you're like part like the parking lot was right next. You had that big ass lot, camp, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah our base, base camp, camp yeah. was literally behind uh Intelligentsia. Yeah. Right there. So okay, I'd, yeah, I'd walk, yeah. I'd go get coffee, and I'd go and it was cool for me because like I told you, I lived right behind the sunny spot. Mm. So it was just like nostalgia. It was like, fuck, I'm home. Did you go there? Huh? Sunny spot a lot? All the time. It was uh it was a different name though when I moved okay. in. I'm, I can't remember what it was called, and they had a hundred dollar hamburger. What? Uh, yeah. Was it made of gold? No, it was literally, that's why I ordered it one time because I was like, what the fuck? It was just, is, it was just a normal <laughs> fucking hamburger. And I'm like, dude, only people that live out here would be conned <laughs> into buying this shit. Just an In-N-Out burger. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? Like, you had to drive all the way down Washington to get this <laughs> exactly. shit. Exactly. Bucks. Um, but dude, one, you know, I'm a huge fan of yours. Uh, and we're talking about uh, the real bros of Simi Valley. Yeah. What was that? What was it like making that show, man? Dude, I mean, everyone on that, set is so fucking funny and like uh like jimmy's just like like jimmy and christian like the writing in that show is amazing like even the table read when we were sitting down before we're all just cracking up the whole time we knew it was going to be a blast shooting that show and it like just was it was awesome how did it differ you guys started the season one was on face i mean it was on youtube yeah how did it differ going to facebook for season two I mean, it was like way bigger budget. I was going to say, did it get like way more official? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like the episodes were longer and the shoot, like we shot the first season in three days. Damn. It was like a show up at this house, shoot for three days straight. And then, you know, they did what they could with the footage. They made it into like four episodes that were like yeah. however long, six minutes or something like that. And then the second season was a month long shoot. We shot out like on a lake um, and just like, I don't know, it was awesome. Just like we had like trailers and shit. I felt like a real actor. Do you get know? harassed now for smoking weed? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know, you know what's funny? You know what's a funny thing I realized is that there's no funny answer to do you burn. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I burn, bro. <laughs> it's not funny. I, nah, I, I say that and they're <laughs> like, huh. And I'm like, don't hum. You put me in this position. Because <laughs> people are always like, I can see it on their face. They're like, like this kid in Maui, he like recognized me, tapped me on the shoulder. And I turn around. He's like, yo, <laughs> And I'm like, here it goes. Here it comes, man. <laughs> you finish a sentence for him. Yeah, like, yeah, do yes, I burn? Yes, yes bro, I burn. I burn. I'm like, I'm like, what's up? He's like, do you burn, bro? <clears throat> and then laughs, and I'm like, huh, yeah, I do. And he's like, mm. all right. Cool. <laughs> and he left, and I'm like, good. You're not gonna laugh at my shit. <laughs> It's ridiculous. That's no, a, but it's cool. It's cool being recognized from that show. 100. percent Do you do you feel like there'll be a season three? I hope so, man. Oh, you don't even know. I yet. don't know. I oh, keep so asking. You're, you're no, in the I, same boat as all of us. I keep like. Drafting a text to Jimmy, being like, "Hey man, is it renewed?" And then I'm like, "That's just stupid." <laughs> you write it in your notes. And I, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anytime I gotta write something important <laughs> to somebody, I start it in the notes, and then I, I read it for like a day. Yeah. You know, and I gotta make sure it doesn't come off like too like hostile or too. Send fucking. it to my girlfriend. Hey, can you proofread? <laughs> can you proofread this? Yeah, this? <laughs> you girl, I feel like girlfriends are always like the the first person that like you know you go to to make sure that you're not being like insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. hey, do it. Do I do I seem normal? Yeah. Here? yeah exactly. Yeah. Or just anything. <laughs> Anything that happens, I just send it to my girlfriend. I'm like, check this out. <laughs> Memes? Hey, check this I out. I took a shit. Is this? Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a picture. <laughs> what do you think of this shit? 
I really I've done that before. You have my girls, dude. She's a real one, man. Okay, she's, she likes to stay fully involved in yeah. my life. Yeah, <laughs> that all like that's fully involved. bowel it movements. Doesn't get much no. more than that. <laughs> <laughs> when the dog shits in the house, like everything. Do you guys live together? Uh, yeah, well, she works on a show in Vancouver. Okay. Um, so for like nine, ten months out of the year, she's up there shooting. And so she'll come back like almost every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and then on hi hiatus and stuff, yeah, we, we live okay. together in LA. What about you? Uh, uh, my girlfriend is not doing a show in Vancouver. Okay. <laughs> you guys do, live together? We do live together, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you guys live on the west side? Yeah, we How do. long have you lived together? Eight months. Eight months, I think, yeah. What do you think is the hardest thing about living with, you know, your significant other? I, we honestly are really good roommates. Yeah? It's weird. Yeah, yeah, When she first, we, we went through this like weird period where I was living with my old roommates, which were like buddies from college. And she like, you know, this was like two month period where her lease ended. And so I'm like, why don't you move in with me? And so we like lived in this apartment with three other dudes and our apartment just was smelled like shit all the time. There's shit everywhere. <laughs> And so that was like a weird period. And then when we finally moved into our own place and like had like, you know, we each have our own space. Like I have my office and she's got her, she's got the living room and there's like another room. It's like nice that we can like, I don't know, we have our own shit, you know? Yeah. My We're not sharing it with two other I dudes. see. I have a I, I have like a house, and my homie lives there as well. And so she's been there for like all of that. So okay. I feel I feel you. Like you know, it takes a real one to to survive a guy. Oh and yeah, his, yeah, and his best friends. Hundred percent. That apartment a, was gross. <laughs> I don't think I could live with her and her best friends. Yeah. Like I don't think I would. I would. Yeah. I'd go to dinner, and I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel I feel like lost. Yeah. Um. So so shout out to her. Salute to her. Mm -hmm. Um. What do you think the best thing about living with your girlfriend is? The best thing. I mean, it's just, you know, you have a friend there all the time, you know? <laughs> no, we fucking do when it, like, when 9 p.m. comes and I get off, stop working at 9, usually. Go That's over like to the your cutoff time? That's like, yeah, 9 p.m. is usually when it's like, all right, so you start winding down. Go to the couch and we just watch whatever show, you know, flaked, potentially. <laughs> I might go re rewatch re that shit. <laughs> right now we're crushing the office. <laughs> oh, are you? Yeah. Have you, you've already seen it though, right? I did, but it was like when I was younger and I think I stopped at like season four or something. Oh, shit. So like, and I, I don't want to ruin anything for you. Yeah. Yeah, you, you got some good times ahead of you. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm, we're on like nearing the end of season three now. Okay. And it's just it's so fucking good. I feel like that's the one show that you can always put like when it's fucking 12, 30 p like a.m. and I'm like going to go to bed, but I don't want to like invest my time into something. Mm -hmm. Just put on The Office. Yeah. It's like literally background music for everybody. Yeah. If you've already seen it. Okay. If not, then you should like pay attention. <laughs> you like because violently it's, watch it. You're no, like, I mean, it was like such an amazing show and there's so many like weird subtleties that like, I don't know. I just feel like it deserves like attention. I'm so mad that that Steve Carell's not down to, to bring it back and do it again. Is he not? No. You, oh, you didn't see that no, thing on what? SNL? No. There was like a bunch of them that came together on Saturday Night Live. Uh, and I think it was when Steve Carell was hosting. Okay. Uh, and they're like, yo, let's do another season of The Office. He's like, absolutely fucking not. I don't want to tell you who comes in at the very end. Yeah. Because it'll ruin it for you. Yeah. But like, you can just tell like, it, it's not the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Wasn't it Will Ferrell or yeah, something? Okay. Okay. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. dude, you know. I mean, everyone knew. At it's, that point, I, I wasn't watching the show anymore, but it was all over like the media. For sure. I like stopped watching The Walking Dead and I knew when, when that guy Glenn died. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. just off, you know. And uh, that similar thing happened in Family Guy, I believe. Yeah. When uh, Brian died. Brian dies? In one, in one episode. It was like the biggest <laughs> no, thing on spoiler social. Spoiler alert. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Stop listening slash watching the podcast right now if you're a fan of Family Guy. Um, what's like your dream show to be a part of? Oh, fuck. That's a good question. Something like The Office? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Honestly, Real Bros. <laughs> Dude, it's- That shit is so much fun. And like, you just got to act like a shitty bro, which I kind of am anyway. So like, it com <laughs> comes with the territory. You know? Do you guys have bros in Canada? We have like snowboard bros. Okay. And like, yeah, there's like, like hockey bros, obviously. Yeah. I was never a hockey guy, though. I grew up, dude. My dad's from Canada, yeah. that's, which is why I have the maple okay, leaf. Right, right. But uh, I, I grew up on skates, so yeah, like, okay. Yeah. I was forced to, you know, I had to like shoot pucks on plexiglass outside of my fucking, you know, house. Like I'd, I'd go to school, I'd come home from school, I'd have hockey practice, I'd go from hockey practice to like a private practice, mm -hmm. and then I'd come home. And my dad would make me shoot pucks. Yeah. So was, you. I was are a, ho a hockey bro. I, I was a hockey bro. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. And you know, my dad was, you know, like just. He was coach dad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I turned 15, started smoking weed, got into music, and he hated me. <laughs> so 
He likes me again now. Okay, I'm, that's I'm, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I'm good. successful, I'm like, so I've won my way back into my dad's heart. <laughs> but well, that would have been a dark any, turn to this podcast. <laughs> was like, and I haven't spoken to him since. I got emancipated when I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't speak anymore. <laughs> uh, what'd you do when you grew up? You didn't play hockey? Uh, I didn't. So, okay, so get this. I was like one of the only kids in Calgary that, or anywhere on earth that was a diver. So like, when I was a 10, year, 10 years old, my friend was like, yo, do you want to take a learn to dive class, springboard diving? Okay, so it's like diving off yeah, of yeah. big Towers ass. Towers and springboards. Dope. He's like, do you want to take a learn to dive class? And I was like, no, that's, no, that sounds lame. And then he was like, come on, man, just do it. And I was like, okay, fine. Did it with him, like fell in love with it for some reason, and then did it for the next 12 years. I went to Olympic trials. I, that's why I went to call it. That's, I mean, I was You got recruited. a scholarship? Yeah, yeah, at Duke. For diving. There's a whole reason I went there. It's because of diving. It like opened up so many doors for me in life. And uh, I don't know. It was awesome. Like your first day going to diving class, like what do you learn? Like what do they tell you? Like they're like, they're like, I don't know. It's like trample. You do trampoline and shit and you like learn how to. It's a really like unnatural thing for a human being to land on their head because your body's like doing everything to protect your head. Yeah. And so you have to like train your body to like go in straight on the water. Otherwise, you just flop on your back or you're like, you have the tendency to arch and shit like that. You must have belly flopped like oh, yeah, yeah. thousands of yeah. times. I mean, that never stops no matter yeah. how good you get. Really? Oh, yeah. You slip out of your, slip out of your like tuck oh. or your pike or whatever. Dude, I had this one girl on my team that at like nationals or something, she was on 10 meter, the high one, and was doing like a front three and a half. And she slipped out of her tuck and landed on her face. And she got out of the water and she her hairline was bleeding. She detached her retinas. Oh. Yeah, yeah. She had two giant black eyes for like a month. It's gnarly, dude. You said a three and a half. Is that three flips? Yeah, three flips three a f- into a dive. Fuck. Yeah. Damn. It's crazy. Oh, um, I don't even know. Yeah, dude. I like, what's the big, do you know the biggest thing you've jumped off of? Uh, I think 20 meters is the biggest. How many feet that I've jumped that? off? I'm a dumb American. Uh, I don't know. Don't have to, <laughs> like, ask Siri real quick. <laughs> I don't have like a Jamie or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Back Can we pull that up. <laughs> yeah. This is a low budget podcast, dude. <laughs> She's like, "Fuck off! I'm not doing conversions for you right now." So when you go on like vacate, like I've only I, I've jumped off some rocks at like Havasu and shit that were like four, you know, forty feet, and I yeah. thought I was like a total bass. When you go on vacation, are you? St- oh, there we go. Yeah, 20 meters. 65, 65 feet. feet? Holy shit. Yeah, you, you do have a Jamie. What yeah, you? I do. Her name's Hazel. She's Hazel. amazing. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Hazel. Thank you, Hazel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on vacation, are you, like, looking for shit to hit? Like, you're like, yeah, I could. I could. No, I mean, ever since, like, I, like, when I graduated college, I, that's when I retired, and it was, like, it was, like, I totally lost everything. So if you don't do that for, if you don't, like, practice it, you just lose air awareness, and you just become, like, normal you know do you ever watch those videos on like world star or youtube just like the diving fails like no but people just like run on those fucking yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Just like, shit, <laughs> i've seen dude those. i couldn't imagine that's just like yeah something that i would not feel comfortable doing and i think it's what you said it's like going head first into like a body of water just yeah. seems so unsafe yeah dude some of my friends still do like high dive like once a year this dude i know from calgary that used to dive on my team he's now like has like a normal job and is married and whatever. And and once a year for the stampede in Calgary, he'll get up on, it's like 60 feet and he'll do a gainer off of it into like a tiny pool. Ugh. Just to, I just for, I don't know. Did you see that fool? Uh, fuck, I can't remember his YouTube name, but I was obsessed with his videos where he would sneak into hotels and private property. Like he'd like climb like your backyard oh. and Laguna Beach and he would jump like two, I don't know, fucking a hundred feet and like clear like, crazy amounts and like barely make it into the water okay did you never seen that i don't think so oh dude and this guy he got on the news i followed him for like a year because everyone's like this guy's gonna die this guy's gonna die and um, would he climb shit too bro he would get on yeah he'd like break into hotels and he'd get on like the like the, the highest roof and he would jump into their swimming pool and like clear like 50 feet of concrete oh my God. and like barely make it in well he was doing a dive uh at the beach and he climbed someone's backyard in like laguna beach and it was all rocks and he thought it was way deeper and so when he dives and oh he would wear a gopro strapped on his fucking head and so you hear him like when he's going in and he doesn't realize that there's rocks underneath he's like oh 
and just fucking hits and broke like, I don't know, he broke like 30 bones in his body. And it was on the news because they finally got him. And they were trying to like charge him with like breaking and entering. As and he's like, in a full body he's cast. Like, yeah. He's like, relax. <laughs> let me heal up a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that's, why, like, why even, like, if you know, I, it's like the, uh, have you seen the free solo movie? I haven't seen it yet, but do you no, know but about? I the keep, guy that I keep hearing climbs? about that. Yeah. It's like, you're, it's like, he's going to, die eventually there's like two yeah there's two ways out it's like death or a fucking body cast yeah no that guy's the free solo guy is gonna die like event <laughs> like like i mean i don't like you know it's he keeps doing like crazier and crazier things and this movie is about him like free climbing like the uh, uh yosemite or whatever el capitan i think mm. it's like super high oh, yeah, i heard climb. i listened to a podcast that he was on okay yeah, yeah, yeah. he was talking so he free climbs like no ropes nothing and it's just like, I think you're just tempting fate at a certain point. Do you think no matter how good have you can a be. a death wish? I kind of think that they do. I don't know. I don't know what else, how else you'd explain that. Yeah, unless you just really love, climb. but like, why not have a rope, dude? Maybe, I don't fucking Maybe he it. just really hates ropes. That's what it is. He's like, I can't fucking stand <laughs> My these. My whole life, these I've hated ropes. Safety worms. <laughs> Can't do it. He has like a whole camp of vendetta against ropes. Yeah, he wants yeah, to do yeah. everything. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, if there was another way that I could be safe up here, I would do it in a second. I just hate ropes. My thing is too, like, why not bring a fucking parachute when you do that shit, just in case? You know, like, 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 just Squirrel to have. Suit. When I was a kid, I was like, why doesn't everybody fly with a parachute? Yeah. That way, like, if the plane ever goes down, you just open up the door. Kind of smart, right? Yeah. Like, what? Like, you buy your ticket. Delta gives you like a fucking one size fits all parachute. You put it on, something happens, open up the door, everyone's jumping. Kind of smart. Kind of smart. I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. Or jetpacks. <laughs> that would be dope, too. I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> Damn. Would you ride, Would you fly a fucking jetpack? Like, if it came down to it and I needed to for, <laughs> okay. for my life, yeah, I'd fly. I want to do the ones in the water. Yeah. You know, that have the fucking that the so hose. Funny. But those feel limiting as well. Because, like, once you're out of water, like, where the fuck do you go? I, I have no idea. Yeah. That, that to me, like when I think of that, I just think of all the videos I've seen of people going up and then just <laughs> face planting. <laughs> just it's everything so, going on. And it seems like so safe. You're like, yeah, I'm over fucking water. Yeah. And just, no. <laughs> Has anyone ever flown one of those things successfully? I think every <laughs> single person who uses it goes up and then just. <clears throat> I've watched a guy like give a demo to like some tourists and shit and be like, yeah, this is fucking amazing. Like <laughs> right. I just got it and just, just <laughs> fucking eat It shit. was on the news, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it that news? And she's like interviewing him from the dock. <laughs> He just fucking eats it. That's like the the news lady uh, um, when she went to the grape. Uh, she went to like the yeah, wine convention. Yeah, yeah. That's so old, dude. That's like the first meme. That literally, I no. That's why I'm like I'm dating myself right now because I'm like, damn, I'm fucking old. Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking ancient. Yeah. What do you remember? Like when meme culture like became a huge thing for you? For me? Yeah. Just like when like when you got into memes. Uh, I'm not, I don't know, man. I, I've never really been that into memes. My ex girlfriend's mom used to call them memes. Yeah. <laughs> Mames, if you're French. Mames. <laughs> Me memes. <laughs> You've never been a meme guy? Not really. I mean, I don't know. I was never the, like, whenever a vine went super, super viral, I was always like the anti, I'm, I'm never going to watch that. For just for just uh, out of spite, I don't know why. You know, like I'm not gonna watch this shit that everyone's talking about. What happens when your vines like would go viral? Would you like fuck fuck this? Yeah, shit? just fuck them, delete them. <laughs> would never watch them again. <laughs> no, that that I liked because I was like, that's me. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> but like, I would just I don't know. I would avoid all the trending shit until like five months after it died, and then I would watch it and be like, that's fucking amazing. Like the peanut butter baby. Mm. When I watched that, I was like, this is the this is the best thing I've ever watched in my entire life. And by that point, nobody was talking about it anymore. People, it was old news. Mm. You couldn't joke about it anymore because people were like, yeah, I mean, have you seen every the, remix the, of the, the Peanut Butter yeah. Baby? That's and, how I am with shows. I'm watching like The Sopranos right now and Game of Thrones, mm. and I've never seen either one before. Okay. And people freak out. What? Yeah. You haven't seen G Game of Thrones? I and I avoided it for so fucking long because of how popular it was. Yeah. And I didn't want to be like that guy talking about dragons and shit. It's kind of cool though. And now, yeah, now it's, you're like, let's talk about season one, episode three. And people I'm are like, starting a whole new podcast that's dedicated to nothing but Game <laughs> yeah, of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> people are like, dude, I was 12 when that episode came out. I'm not talking about that shit right now. Memes always scared me though, because I never wanted to be one. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always crazy to me, like how an artist would come out and like once you get made a meme, 
you pop off. Oh, you mean if you're like, yeah, yeah if your song was used for. Or yeah, or like if some fucked up thing or, happened to you in an interview yeah. or like you fall off stage or something, yeah. like it's a rap. Like yeah. you're, you're that dude. Yeah. And I mean, you look at like Bad Baby, uh, you know, or bl- like even like Blueface, right? Yeah. Like it just you mean instantly. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a, so it's true, definitely man. like a blessing the, and a curse. There, I think, yeah, it could go either way. I think, and it I think could, it, it could fuel you, mm. or it could like destroy you. Just so inspirational right now. About me. <laughs> about <laughs> me. <laughs> it's ad time. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Hims. Sixty six percent of men lose their hair by age thirty five. The thing is, when you start to notice hair loss, it's already too late. It's easier to keep the hair you have than to replace the hair you've lost. Is your hairline slowly starting to move backwards? Do you have any bald spots yet? I ask you. Do you want a bald spot to pop up or do you want to do something about it first? Why do you guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can turn to medicine and science? The solution is 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skincare, sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat hair loss. Well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair. There's no waiting room, no awkward in-person doctor visits. You can save hours by going to 4 Hims.com. It's easy. You answer a few quick questions. The doctor will review and you can prescribe and he will prescribe what you need for you. Products are shipped directly and discreetly to your door. You can order now. My listeners get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today, right now, while supplies last. See the website for details. This would cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash ADHD. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash ADHD. Forhims.com slash ADHD. Today's episode of the podcast is also brought to you by BetterHelp. They are a previous sponsor of the pod, so shout out to BetterHelp for that. Is there something that interferes with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. You can connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's convenient. You can get help on your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist, licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, grief, or self-esteem. Anything you share is confidential. If you're not ha- happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. There's four communication modes, text, chat, phone, and video, and you can start communicating in under 24 hours. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. ADHD with Travis Mills listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code ADHD. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash ADHD, fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's it's betterhelp.com slash a d h d. Um, when Vine, I see, I was super late to Vine, but yep. when Vine was over, like, how did you feel about that? Were you ready to like get on, or like, were you like, fuck? Yeah, that was like a like a kind of a weird moment in my life because, like, I knew it was dying. Everybody knew you could feel it. You know, people just like weren't watching the videos anymore. You know, everything was getting like less comments and less whatever, and it's like it just like felt like nobody was using the app anymore. Mm. So I kind of expected it. But like at that time, um, I had started the process of like getting my visa that would allow me to do like entertainment full time. And so I was like kind of checked out of being a software engineer. So when that happened, I was like, this is like kind of a huge, like I'm going to have to start from scratch basically. And like, that's essentially what I did. Like I, I had never used a DSLR camera before. I'd never edited anything my entire life. So like just conquering that learning curve and all while being like, I have to do this because I now I have this new visa. I can't be a software engineer anymore, even if I wanted to. Damn. I could go back to Canada and do it, but like I gave up my software engineering yeah. visa and was like, this is what I want to do. So, you know, that was like a kind of a scary time. Yeah, just the like, first day that like you turn on your your new camera, like are you like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck am I going to even do? Like I have no idea. Like, sketches? Like what? where do you even start? And it's just about just doing shit over and over again, figuring it out. Do you remember the first thing you did? I did, well, the first camera I got, I did this like, stu- oh, actually no, the, my very first YouTube video was back in like 2014. I just had a GoPro and I was like, I should maybe try and do something like longer form. And so I filmed myself just being stupid with a GoPro, like sitting there reading reading tweets or something. It was like a three minute video. And then like fast forward when Vine died and I finally got like a another, like a real camera, I 
I think I did a sketch or something stupid. I did some stupid sketch about what it's like to use Snapchat or some stupid shit like that. And then from there, I just, I don't know. And what made you want to start a podcast? Um, I, I honestly, it was like, it was just like a new medium. I wanted something like less edited, more like a, the, when I, when I first got into it, it was a podcast that I started by myself. And I was just like, it would be cool to have some outlet where it just like, I could just speak freely. And if people want to listen, they can listen. If not, then whatever. But at least like, I'm just getting my thoughts. I actually read a, a tweet that was like, that was like, dudes in LA or something like that. And then like the arrow, you know, the meme there's like the arrow and then it like traces around yeah. something to a destination. It was like going to therapy and it's like navigates around it and it's like starting a podcast. <laughs> this is kind of what Yo, I, did. I feel it. It's, it, it's just weird to me. And what's crazy is like, is how much, like how many comments or how many messages I get just about that. Like, like I told you before we started, it's like, you're my 15th episode mm. and the amount of like, you know, just fans or kids or whatever just being like yo i listen to your podcast and so and so said this and it really like people are out here really listening to the shit yeah and when i sit in here i do not feel like that oh yeah, like, yeah. i feel like i'm talking to you like you yeah, like, yeah, yeah there's someone out there and and that's it and it just blows my mind but then i think about like literally all day i'm driving i'm listening to somebody else do the same mm -hmm. exact thing yep it's weird because it feels like we're almost going backwards in the way that we're consuming media right now. Because, I mean, like radio, when it first started, like families gathered around to fucking just listen to some dude talk like out of a box. Mm -hmm. And now like kids are going on some app to listen to people talk. Yeah, that's pretty funny. With no production. Yeah. Or like no music. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking weird. That's And that's what I wanted to try, I guess. I was just like, what? what it, will people listen? Like, will this actually help? Just like being able to spew my thoughts out and not have to like edit it every space out, you know, like you do with videos and I have to think about like the concept of the video and all this shit. So that's what I started doing. And then eventually the episodes got longer and longer and longer. And then, um, and then I started doing it with Noel and it just kind of became like a regular thing. And now it's just like this awesome community. Oh, for sure. Dude. Like the Patreon and the discord, like we have a whole discord group. And now, like, the people that come see our live shows are all people that listen to the podcast, too. So they're all just, it's just like an hour of, like, inside jokes. It's fucking dope. That's crazy. And, yeah, yeah I mean, you you guys just got off the road. And, mm. uh, you know, you finished your sold-out tour. Congratulations. Thank you. What was, uh, what was that process, you know, being on the road like? Have you, have you ever done a tour or anything? No. no? We did a small tour, like, uh, last February. It was, like, a, you know, four-stop on the West Coast. So we flew in and out. Did two shows a night. So it was eight shows total in four days. And it was like our first taste of what it was like to do that sort of thing. And then I remember we were like, we were after our first shows in Phoenix, we were out back after the show and we were like, God, it'd be so sick to tour like on a tour bus one day. And we were like, yeah, but that's, you know, that's years away. Like it's, it's, you know, we're not even close to that yet. What would we even do? Like blah, blah, blah. And we're like, yeah, but it's a cool like pipe dream. And then fast forward when the tickets went on sale for this tour in like December or whatever, and it sold out like immediately and we upgraded the venues and those sold out. And we were like, this is fucking actually happening. Real rock this star is insane. Shit, dude. It was just like, it was surreal. It was like, I can't, I, I remember this conversation like it was yesterday that we thought this would never happen. And now it's fucking, this was a super weird moment for me. What do your diving friends say? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question <laughs> do they hit you up still or no yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, still, yeah? I still hang you guys are in like them. the diving group chat no okay. nothing like that but <laughs> okay. we still like I still like see, it's like the when you're in their city or they're, they're in yours they'll hit you up and be like hey I'm around that's like the cool part about touring too is like you know you have those friends in those different spots you know that move away wherever yeah yeah and, and yeah. When, you're, when you're on the road you know you get, you get to see them yeah it's, it's like a cool way to catch up did, did that happen to you guys yeah it did it was really cool it Bring was, them on it the was, bus and shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look like, at yeah, this. Yeah, check yeah, it this out. Is my crib on wheels. It's my lifestyle, baby. Yeah. What can I say? It was like, it was weirdly nerve wracking. Like, were you ever nervous performing for people? Like, oh, extended dude. network friends and dude, stuff like I've that? Dude, I've had anxiety attacks like on stage. Yeah, yeah, where, like, yeah. I had to like turn around and like dump a bottle of water on my head yeah. and like look at my DJ and be like, I'm gonna die. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> That's crazy. And I've like ran off stage and like just like told them to like play a random song and like been freaking the fuck out and then like, put a shirt on so people think it was like an outfit change but I'm not like Britney Spears so I don't do fucking outfit changes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I just the problem like, is like you come up, come on stage and people are like that makes sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got water all over his shirt I mean it makes sense that he'd change it it's like it's nothing but dad it's just literally a fucking black t-shirt <laughs> I just put a new one on but yeah dude I used to and what's crazy is like you know when I started touring 
fuck, this is like nine, once again, aging, this is like nine years ago. I feel like anxiety and all of that shit, like it wasn't as talked about and it definitely wasn't like as glorified as it is now. Mm. Like I feel like now, like, you know, if if you don't have like face tattoos and like weird color hair and like you're not rapping about like depression and yeah. anxiety, like you're, you're not on SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. Now anxiety is just like a chorus. It's a, it's, it literally is. It literally sells tickets. Yeah. And I didn't tell anybody back then. Like I'd go in and it will it it would always happen at like the worst like I'd go into like a meeting with like a record label and I'd be fine but I'd like look at someone and be like yo right now would be the worst time to have a panic attack Travis <laughs> and that's when and you're that's like oh <laughs> fuck it starts building and you're like oh no 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 yeah like my first time in the studio with real producers he had to call 911 Really? Could, yes, bro. I was like, I'm literally going to die. And I, obviously I didn't die. Yeah. Uh, and so I just felt like a fucking idiot. Like walking back in after like I calmed down, everyone was, was creeped out. You know, <laughs> they were like, what the fuck is it's wrong crazy. with this kid? I had my first one six months ago, I think. So it was about six months ago. Oh, really? And yeah, my first like real one where I had to go to the hospital and like legit okay. thought I was dying. Yeah. I never, I never ever had anxiety before that. Me neither. And mine was, uh, I was, I was like 18 or 19 and it was New Year's and bro, I hate, I hated raves and like all that shit. <clears throat> My friends were like, yo man, we're going to this super chill club in LA. And I was like, okay, cool. And, uh, I got there and it was a fucking rave and, uh, I freaked out. And like, that's when it happened. Yeah. And so I went to the fucking medical tent cause I thought I was dying. I never felt, dude, never had anxiety in high school or anything like that. Never even knew what it was. Um, and I thought I was having a heart attack. And so the, they put me in an ambulance and then the EMT that was in the ambulance, like put my heart rate thing up. She's like, holy shit, your heart's over like 190. over." <laughs> <laughs> and I was just kept looking at her. I was like, am I going to die? Am I going to die? She's like, probably. <laughs> she was not, she was not sure. Um, but then, yeah, I, got, I went to the hospital and they thought I was on drugs. And so they drug tested me and I was obviously clean. And, um, they were like, yeah, you just, you had a panic attack. I was like, fuck. It's gonna all be right. the worst place to have a panic attack. At a rave? Yeah. <laughs> when the, everyone's just like, all right, what the fuck did you take? Like I, you're on ketamine or what's yes. going on? And and you know, I tried to tell my friends and they're rolling balls and like mm -hmm. they're like shirt off and like eyes are like three times yeah. the size they're sweating. You're like, I'm gonna die. They're like, me too. <laughs> Let's die together. <laughs> together as one. <laughs> <Plur>. <laughs> it just, yeah, it was awful. Yours was was it on tour or where No, no, it wasn't. It was just like I I was fuck completely random. I woke up on a Sunday and was like a little bit hungover and had to take an Uber out to Six Flags to do this like brand deal thing. And on the way, I just I just started feeling awful and I was like something's fucking wrong. I can't breathe. I can't I can't like no matter what I did, I couldn't get comfortable and I just kept getting worse and worse and worse and I was like the only explanation for this is that I'm dying. And yeah. it just was like the worst feeling just down and my heart was racing. I started sweating and I was like, I'm dying. I think I'm dying. We have to go to the hospital because I'm, I'm dying. You told your Uber driver? I told my girlfriend who was sitting there and she was like, she told the Uber driver. She's like, can you just change the route? Hospital? Change the route. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. And so and you get there. I get there and I'm just like, I'm like out of it. I'm loopy and I'm, I'm, I'm just talking to the person. I'm like, I have no idea how to explain this. I think I'm dying. And she's like, all right, sit there, there and we'll get you in eventually. It's like the worst thing. Just, yeah. All right, just chill. Yeah, because I mean, they know, like they've seen that probably a million times. They're probably like, it's like he's having a panic attack. So they they took me in, they did an EKG and shit like that because what's kind of scary is that there really isn't any like, like a heart attack and a panic attack are basically the exact same they symptoms. Feel, yeah, they feel the same. So they have to do that shit. They have to do the EKG and stuff. Everything came back normal. So he's like, I think you just had a pretty bad panic attack. And then I went and saw my doctor because after that happened, I didn't feel normal for like two months. Damn. It was just like constant, this like, just almost like depression. But again, like I've never had that in my entire life before. So I didn't know how it felt. I just felt like shit all the time. And I was like, is this what this is? Like, I don't know. And I kept having like almost panic attacks again where I'd, you know, then I'd do the grounding shit that I learned and like kind of fight it off. And then when saw my doctor finally about it, like a couple months later and she like prescribed me antidepressants, I didn't take them because I was like, I think I can try and like work yeah, this shit out by yeah. myself. And it's gotten way, way better. My biggest thing was like, that was when the tour was being announced. And I was like, am I even gonna be able to do this? Oh, Get up dude. on stage and do stand up, Like with this fucking new anxiety that I'm having all the time. And um, yeah, eventually I, I'm, def I'm definitely better now. Good. So like it took a while to like work itself out, but yeah. like. 
You and said now grounding. What, what was some of the things that you were doing to, to ground yourself? This is some shit that Noel taught me, actually. Okay. Because he's been fighting panic attacks forever. He had a couple on stage when we were- For real? When we were performing, shit yeah. Shit sucks, dude. And with like, with stand-up, it's just like, you just got to tell the audience. So like, he, luckily, you know, we're on stage together. So it's like, if he's dealing with Freaking some shit, out. I can try and take yeah. over. But he he just would just be like, straight up, I guys, I don't think I'm having a panic attack right now. <laughs> I got to just like- so the the what you do is like you find six things in the room and you just look at them over and over and you repeat what they are. Oh, so what? and it helps you like keep in your body, right? Because yeah. like when when the panic shit happens, you sort of like dissociate a little bit. Hundred percent. Yeah, like I totally felt like out of body, like I wasn't even there. But if you're like focusing on shit that's in the room and you keep repeating it, it just like brings your focus to like the physical plane. And so damn, that's a really good idea. It. Yeah, yeah, no, it totally works. That's insane. I'll have them at the most random times now. Like I've honest, I've, what's crazy is that like my quote unquote near death experiences have alleviated a lot of my anxiety. Cause I'm like, if I didn't die from that, okay, I'm not going to die from this. Like what, what near death? Uh, I fell through a roof. I fell through a skylight in downtown LA, okay. like probably 15 to 18 feet into an abandoned building doing a photo shoot. Uh, and the what? photographer and my homies, I'm a dumbass. Okay. I thought the skylight, I, I thought skylights were made of glass. Yeah. Like, you know, those bubbles on top yeah, of the building? Yeah, yeah, I thought they were made of glass. They're not. They're made of plastic. plastic okay. <laughs> yeah. Could you step on it? Dude, we were on the roof uh, of this huge, you know, 20-story building in downtown LA. And, um, and fucking, we're doing a photo shoot. And I'm like, okay, cool. Da, 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 moving around. And I see a skylight. So I put one foot on it. And uh, I'm like, cool. I'm just going to stand on this thing. And so I go to put my other foot on it. And that shit just caved in. And I didn't know what the fuck was under there because we're just on some roof. And so I break through this thing. And, and you're like, just falling. Dude, I went literally, my arms went straight up in the air. Like I had cut because uh, the plastic like cut my whole fucking arm open and shit. So I had cuts like all over my arm. And uh, I fell through the skylight. There was a wall right here. So, and I was wearing like Vans. I was wearing just like no padding on my fucking things or nothing. And I ran down the wall like Literally, because I went back the next day and I saw. And so when I hit, I landed on my heels and then my tailbone and I was wearing a backwards hat and my head went back to hit the concrete, but the bill of the hat like kind of bounced my head back. And I was just in this pitch black room. I didn't know where the fuck I was. For a second, I thought I died. And uh, my friends thought I fell 20 stories. The photographer thought I fell 20 stories. He like, he was tripping. He thought he watched me die. And um, and so I'm like, after like 10 seconds, I'm like, okay, I can't move. Cause you know, that's what like they tell you when you fucking fuck yourself up. So I'm like, I can't move. So I just I'm like, help, help. And then they all come over to the skylight and like, they're all looking down. But then I realized like, they can't jump down and get me, Yeah, you know? And so I had to fucking get up and I open up this door and it's an apartment building. So I start banging on these, these people on just doors. And then I realized it's abandoned. Like no one lives there. It, and there, there was a fucking, there was a table saw like probably five feet in front of where I landed Jesus. with a fucking saw on oh there, my dude. God. So like if I, like literally if I would have landed like five feet in front, I would have landed on a fucking table saw. And so they were renovating the apartment, the whole building was under renovation. So the whole thing was empty. And so I had to like climb up and out onto a different roof. And then like they had to pick me up. Ended up Did like- you get fucked up? Like your Dude, lenses. I fucking blew out like both of my heels, like my ankles and shit. Like they were just like bleed, like black oh. essentially. Um, but that was it. Hmm. Like literally, I got so lucky. I couldn't really do anything for like two weeks. I was like kind of in bed and shit. Um, but yeah, I was just, for a long time, anytime I'd start having a panic attack, I'd be like, dude, you just, you fell through a fucking <laughs> roof. Like, you're okay. Uh, and that helped for a little bit. I'm trying to think. <laughs> okay, so that's, so that's, that's what you should do. I don't recommend. If you're suffering from panic attacks, just <laughs> fall through a skylight. And, you know. This <laughs> oh, I do not, I do not recommend that uh, for anybody. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, that was like, yeah, one, you know, one source of logic for me for a while. I was mm -hmm. like, yo, if I was going to die, it would have been there. Yeah. Um, I, I can't, there's some other ones, but, uh, but that was definitely my most traumatic one. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. That's crazy, man. That's do you have anything, fucking crazy. Do you have anything like that that's happened to you? <clears throat> Not really. Not really. I don't want to jinx anything. Yeah, Jesus. no, no, we're good. We're healthy wood boys. Knock yeah, we're fine now. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mean like near death, near death experience? Yeah, yeah. No, nothing, nothing really. <laughs> good. I'm glad. I'm like a, I'm like a relatively safe dude. I would say. Yeah. Stay safe. You don't yeah. take a lot of, a lot of risks. I'm no. I mean, I'm like, 
I'm like not when not when it comes like I don't do like parkour and shit, you know. I don't free climb, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get a free solo, fucking yeah, exactly. Ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan of ropes. <laughs> you like you enjoy them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine like that dude goes to like some BDSM club, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Gave me the fuck." <laughs> <laughs> These girls are like, "Dude, we just want to have sex with you." <laughs> no, <laughs> come on, we want to fuck you. <laughs> nah, not with those fucking ropes. Laying around. <laughs> That's a fucking weird thing. Dude, phobias are fucking weird. Like, I, 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 I feel like I have a phobia of spiders and I have one tattooed on my fucking neck. Um, yeah, does that does that mess with you when you see it? Or you're like, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Try to yeah, get it off. It like, <laughs> dude, what's crazy is that like, I'll be like going to bed and shit and I'll find spiders in the most awkward places right before I go to sleep. And I'm just like, dude, what if I was like five minutes later and that shit would have been crawling in my fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I took, um, we have like a smoke detector that doesn't work in our mm -hmm. house. Uh, and so I took it out and this one, like literally one of my girlfriends like, babe, look right up there. And there's this fucking spider on a web coming straight down to like my fucking pillow, landed on my pillow. I killed his ass. And literally for like, I couldn't go to sleep because like for three hours, I'm just thinking like, if she wouldn't have said that, I'd be sleeping with this thing. Yeah. Like next to my fucking face. Yeah. I think isn't there, isn't there like some statistic that people eat like seven spiders a month or something? Yeah, I used to say that all the time, and then someone told me I was wrong and that it was myth. made up. Yeah. And uh, so I stopped saying that. But if you're saying that, I'm gonna take your fucking word but for it. But I mean, there's always there's always those like weird like stats and shit that like people just make up and they just become like they, like the like Marilyn Manson had his rib removed to suck his own dick. That's true though. It's not true. No, I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying you, you almost you convinced me again I was out? almost like really <laughs> you, I mean, you must have some information that I don't I, he I did don't, my so. show yeah yeah exactly <laughs> we talked about it I so. felt how many ribs were on each side <laughs> I wonder how that rumor got started it's probably some kid that was like I don't know just like it's a weird ass it's and a that was random like, thing that was like before the internet like that was like really before the internet yeah that was like pre that was the internet back then yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. Marilyn Manson removed his own ribs so he yeah. could suck his dick it's crazy it was almost like a word of mouth meme <laughs> I wonder how many it's like times what, it's like what <laughs> stories were <laughs> before the internet existed. You think like I mean he's like fifty now, so you think when he like goes to the doctor and the doctor's like thirty, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like checking around. They do an X ray. They're like, oh, th this doesn't look right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All your ribs are there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many. Did you times have them put back? back <laughs> <laughs> are they fake? <laughs> Oh, dude. I've known some girls that have hooked up with Marilyn Manson. Really? Yeah. And? Yeah. Um, how How is he in the, in the sack? <laughs> I feel like they're always just like, that was my goth phase. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I he's got to be. I mean, he's probably hooked up with millions of people. Millions of people. Yeah. And he, he always dates like, I feel like he, he dates some girls that like do not look like they'd be into Marilyn Manson. Okay. You know? Yeah. Like just like, I don't know, fucking varsity cheerleaders. Yeah. Except everybody's weirdly into Marilyn Manson. You think? I think? Yeah, he's got like a weird, he's just got a weird appeal. He's just always been his own person, you know? He used to scare the shit out of me when Same. I was a kid. But that's dope. You got to respect that. Michael Jackson used to scare the shit out of me as a kid yep. too. Mm -hmm. I remember like the first time I saw a Michael Jackson video, I legit thought it was a girl. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I was like, oh fuck. How old are you? I'm 29. Okay. How old are you? <clears throat> 28. Oh, really? Yeah, I turned 29 this year. Oh, dope. I turned 30 in a month. Okay. Yeah. How's that? Oh, wait, so you're 1990? Yeah. Okay, I'm 89. Yeah. Uh, 30 is... It's fast approaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited, but I'm scared at the same time. It'll be the same. Like, I feel 29 for me was a great... Uh, it, was a, it was a great birthday. It was a great year. And I learned the most about myself this year than any other birthday. Okay, really? Yeah. Okay, so there's still hope. Late, what, are, you are you hopeless? <laughs> I'm like, I think I've learned just the maximum stuff about myself, you know? There's nothing else there's to learn no about me. There's no improvement from here. <laughs> yeah, there's no improvement. There's no, yeah, it's just all downhill, you know? Oh, dude, I hope not, man. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm just getting, I'm just smarter now. And there's mm -hmm. just like, you know, there's just shit that I just won't do anymore that I, like when I was 23 or 24, even fucking 26, mm -hmm. I'd probably still do. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped smoking cigarettes when I was like 27. Okay. Uh, and that was a huge thing for me. Mm -hmm. And now like, I, I don't even remember who I was mm -hmm. like back then, mm -hmm. you know, like I can't even relate to that Travis. 
Um, Are you still making music? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just, I haven't been releasing any. Uh, I released some in like 2017. But uh, one thing that I started doing last year a lot was focusing on production for and writing for other artists. Okay. It's like executive producing. Oh, cool. Uh, and then I just produced this kid, YK Osiris. Uh, we have a song out called Worth It right now. Okay. Which is dope. This kid, Paris, who I like executive produced his whole Oh, project. I love that dude. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I love that project. Oh, I wrote and recorded all of it. Did you really? I executive produced it. Oh, super dope. One Night in Paris? Yeah. I named it. Really? Dude, no one under... Yo, we're in the studio. Do you know you know what One Night in yeah. Paris is? The sex tape. Yeah. Oh. He, the Paris Hilton sex tape. Oh, yes. Dude. Okay, okay, wait. Yo. What am I thinking of? The Owen Wilson movie? No, but One Night in Paris is what we called the EP. Okay. Uh, and like no one understood the reference. <laughs> okay. So I'm like one in the... Yes, genius. Oh my God. How'd you come up with that? <laughs> I'm like... Dude, dude, what's what's the movie that I'm thinking about? Is it? It's called One Night. You, in, midnight. Uh, midnight, midnight in Paris. No, Midnight Train. Uh, midnight in Paris. Midnight I think in Paris. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, One yeah. Night in Paris was the Paris Hilton sex tape. And Paris's EP that came, or album that came out. <laughs> okay, okay. She just stole the title <laughs> for, her, for her album. I mean, one's porn, one's music. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of the same yeah. thing. Um, no, I love that dude's sound. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah we're working He's on great. the second album right now. That's sick. Yeah. Um, and I got Travis Barker's on there, Trippy's on there. Really? Yeah. Dope. That was cool for me uh, because I'd worked with Travis Barker in the past, but like it was tight because we were all in the studio. We made the song. So I bounced the song, texted it to Travis and was like, yo, I'm working with this kid. You got to fuck with him. And he sent back his fucking, his drum solo like in 12 hours. Really? Yeah. He seems like he's just a beast. Like he wants to just work with upcoming people that's the and thing like he's he, always like he's we're, he did that shit with Lil Aaron for sure yeah and like his ears like always to the street yeah. and like so he's on you know he's on like he's on whatever's coming up that's pretty cool which is dope and I feel like he's always been that way like he was really the first like pop punk dude to start working with rappers mm -hmm. you know he's yeah. like the first one to make drumming like fucking cool yeah and, like you know going toward Lil Wayne mm -hmm. and fucking do songs with the game so and you know he's from Corona I'm from Riverside so growing up he was, I mean, he was always a god to me, dude, mm -hmm. you know? And what's crazy is uh, his best friend, Lil Chris, who passed away in the, in, in the plane crash, he used to detail my dad's cars. What? Really? So he had Are you from here? I'm from, River yeah, Riverside, okay, California. Okay, okay. So uh, Lil Chris had a, a car detailing business. Hmm. And so randomly, this dude's like washing my car. My dad's like, Travis, come outside. And my dad's like, you love Blink-182 and all this shit, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, this is this is Chris. And so me and Chris became cool. And he handed me like, dude, like 150 famous stars and strap stickers. The first day I met him, he's like, here you go, bro. And then he took me to the famous store. And then he took me to Wahoo's when Travis opened up the Wahoo's tacos. Okay. And I got to meet Mark and Travis. No way. And I have the fucking, I still have the skateboard deck that Travis and Mark signed when I was like 13. <clears throat> That's crazy. And I brought it. Like fast forward like 10 years, you know, when I started hanging out with Travis as like an adult. Yeah. I brought the fucking skateboard and he's probably like, you're fucking weirdo. But uh, <laughs> he was like, dude, that's fucking crazy. Uh, you that's know, it's dope. a trip. Um, but yeah, dude. I And I got to go see uh, the last five shows with Tom. No was, way. Yeah. So they were playing at the Wiltern. Uh, it was a crazy story. It was right when I became friends with Wiz. And Wiz was like my favorite rapper, mm. right? Like period. And he's like, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, I'm going to go to the Blink show. And he's like, yo, let's let's roll. So I rolled there with him. And so, you know, we're standing on like stage and shit. And I had this moment of like, I like looked, like whiz past me a joint. And I hit the joint and I like look over and I'm like, fuck, this is like my favorite rapper in the whole world. I'm on stage with Blink-182. Like, like, this is a peak. <laughs> like, my 19-year-old self is fucking like, what? And then my 13-year-old self is like, what? Like, my dreams of music, you know, started and ended with Blink-182. Yeah. Like, I memorized the live album. Yeah. Like, I could do everything. And then was Wiz so was like my icon for, you know, hip-hop and, and just like just fucking being an overall badass. Mm -hmm. So it was like my culmination of my whole life. Like, and I went all five nights, bro. Really? I, did, I didn't give- And was it dope every I single night? didn't give back the pass, you know? <laughs> yeah. I kept the all yeah, access yeah. mats and just went all five nights and they played a different song as their encore every night. That's sick. Um, and so, yeah, dude, except the last night someone fell off the fucking balcony at the Wiltern. Uh, really? So, yeah. And he might have died. This dude like might have died. So it was like all weird and shit like at the end. Um, 
but it was fucking crazy. Like this dude like jumped off like the top. And like, why? Just I don't know. He's loved the show that much. No, I don't know. <laughs> bad I feel bad because I don't know if he if he passed away or not. But yeah, it was fucking. It was like the probably the craziest five nights of my life. Jesus Christ, that's crazy. What did you grow up? Listening did Wiz to? come every single night? No, just okay, once. Okay. No, okay. no. You know he had shit. To <laughs> You're do. like, come on, man. <laughs> we gotta go see this shit again. I heard they play a different song for their encore every, every night. night. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been like, nah, bro, I'm good. <laughs> He's like, one, one, one is all I need. Um, were you a huge Blink fan growing up? Yeah, I was. Huge Blink fan. I was always into pop punk. Some 41, like, fucking. I was always in, like, ska, too. Like, less than Jake and, like, dude, weird shit. Uh, like so I, I worked with this dude, John Feldman, who's the singer of Goldfinger. Okay. Uh, and I remember, like, you know, I used to listen to them all the fucking time when I was growing up. Uh, Real Big Fish. Yeah, yeah, Real Big that? Fish, yep. Yo, ska got a lot of hate back then, though. I know, it was weird. It's right? kind of, like, skanking, and it was, like, such, like, a weird culture. But I just legitimately loved the music. I mm. thought, like, bringing horns into rock was, like, the... Or, Horns into like punk was like the dopest shit ever. Yeah. <laughs> my I used to listen to like like some rockabilly stuff and like weird shit like that. Oh, uh, I used to listen to this band called Tiger uh fuck. It was a rockabilly band. They're okay. called Tiger Army. Okay. Did yeah, you ever listen to that? Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Um yeah, and they were they were definitely rockabilly. And then I saw like <clears throat> how rockabilly people dressed and did their hair. And I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like old 50s style. You're like, yeah, nah, not for me. Yeah, no, not my thing. And then my, my, like, my f absolute favorite artists, and this is like weird to say this, but there are two Vancouver rappers called Swollen Members. Swollen Members? You ever heard of them? Uh-uh. Damn, that's why I can't say it here because people are like, Swollen Members? You listen to a band called Swollen Members? Are they talking for about dicks? Ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's like, all right. I remember I said that. I had no idea what it meant. And then I said that to like one of my friend's dads and he was like, you know what that means, right? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, it means boner. And I was like, what? <laughs> were you bummed? This, yeah, this group is called Boner. <laughs> oh. But they were fucking amazing. That was where my love for hip hop came from, is from them. Swollen members. Look them up. They're, they're yeah, super dope. Yeah, fuel injected. The first time I played a show in Vancouver, there was five, like five people at the show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Solid turnout. I, it was great, man. <laughs> My best market. Uh, it was this place called Fortune Sound Club. Okay. Uh, and yeah, there was like, I mean, two of them were like the bartenders. Mm -hmm. uh, awful, awful. But I, you know, there was weed there and I was like, okay, cool. And Vancouver's dope. Insane. And you know, it got better throughout the years, but uh, I'll never forget that first show. It was that was your first show ever? That was your first in, in Vancouver? Vancouver. Okay. And I was all stoked. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to the motherland. My dad's going to be so proud. And like got there and there was like literally like five people there. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> like maybe I don't have the international presence yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we got to rethink this whole yeah. touring thing. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we're doing Canada in, in August. Oh, awesome. And so I don't know if I'm allowed to say that yet, but it's out there now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pumped. Like I'm going back home. That'll be so nice. that'll be weird. All my high school friends coming to the show. That'll be fucking super weird. Is that yeah? Do they like? Do they trip out? I mean, like because you know you're over here. You're obviously like doing your fucking thing and the entertainment thing. I don't know if Canada has a huge entertainment scene over there. I know they shoot a lot of shit there, but I don't know if like you know there's like a big industry and shit. Are, do, does this like lifestyle and like you know your occupation does it trip them out? It's definitely like it's definitely. I mean, even even going to college, like when I moved to North Carolina and then would come home. For Christmas and stuff, people would be like, oh, what's up, frat boy? Oh, really? What's up, you wearing pastel now, you frat boy? And like, <laughs> so you just get roasted for anything that's not like Canadian. They you call know? you Hollywood now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, now exactly. Oh, what's up, big man on Instagram? Oh, Instagram famous. I'm like, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing more than just Instagram. <laughs> I'm like, you can look into the other shit that I'm doing. <laughs> Doesn't that, I feel like people, yeah, people like look at, you, you know, they everyone thinks that like the success just happens so fast and they don't see like, yeah the five person show in Vancouver. Right? Yeah, they don't exactly. see, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like they don't see the like hours all, and hours. You quitting your fucking, fucking code. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Does that shit ever get to you? I mean a little bit, but I've kind of just stopped. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm trying to do. You know, it's, it's weird. Like I feel like most people get it though. Mm. Like now, because I've just, I've put myself out there and I've done so many things that it's like, now I think people are, I, I mean, I don't know. I would hope that they see that and are like, all right, cool. He's doing his thing. Do you respond to any negative comments? Page. Like, like in real life or online? No, online. 
No, I, I don't. I feel like you'd be like I would never want to like comment something because I feel like you would roast the fuck out of me. I feel like you could just roast somebody super fast. It's weird, man. I feel like the more time I've spent on the internet and the more time I've done content and all this shit, I'm getting more sensitive. Oh, really? Yeah, it comes along with the uh, with the anxiety and everything. Yeah. It's the same shit now. Now I read negative comments and it like kind of fucks me up. It never used to. I always used to be like, whatever, I'm a software engineer. Because you didn't take my, it as serious, right? Yeah, and now it's like, now it's like this, I work so hard to fucking, to be here sitting in this chair. You know, I was like, I'm, I read this shit. I'm like, damn, somebody didn't like that, that video or whatever. That sucks. <laughs> and I just get in my head about it. It's weird. Do you feel bad for the people that you put in the cringe videos? No, now when you're like, you're like, fun, you know, when you're like just firing off on them and then like, do you sit back like, I mean, I like to think mean. we do those in like a playful way. You do, way. you do. The only ones where we're like a little bit mean is like the girl defined ones and and stuff like that. I feel like we go like pretty hard on them because like they're just insane. And they like the, I think stuff that they're saying to young girls and stuff is like, that's bad. So that's why we go super hard on those yeah. girls. But it's like everyone that we've done that's cringe on besides them has reached out to us after and been like, dude, that was so funny. Like you guys are totally right. Blah, blah, blah. And we're friends with all of them. Maddie smokes. We're like friends with him. I play Fortnite with him like all the time. Dude, I saw that one and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like you shine a light on some of the strangest people in the fucking <laughs> world. <laughs> like the fact that somebody would make, I don't even want to call it a career, but a career off of smoking. <laughs> uh, absurd. Smoking a jewel. <laughs> a jewel. Something that doesn't even to do anything it's like a four second head rush and then but he's like the, he's like the, the literally embodiment of blake vapes yeah you, you, like yeah, he yeah. is like yeah. the human embodiment yeah. of that um, it's weird now he's like a celebrity amongst our fans like at the shows man like i we'd say his name and 1600 people would cheer as louder than they would for us opening just act. by saying maddie smoke opening act. that's what i was that's what Bro, i was saying he comes out with the fucking jewel dude think about this man like 10 minutes before the show starts, the fucking music dies the and the dim. lights dim and he comes on stage with a jewel and a stool. <laughs> sets it down and he's a just like- A jewel and a stool. <laughs> he's just like, I'm Maddie Smokes and this is a fatty ghost. And he just <laughs> like, does a crazy French inhale. And That's what I mean. Like, like go where do you nuts, go? Where do you- Bras <laughs> thrown up on stage. <laughs> I love you, Maddie Smokes. <laughs> Sign my jewel. <laughs> He's like, yo, my jewel collab's dropping next yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Signed and numbered. <laughs> Maddie smokes, off white jewel. <laughs> Virgil's like, let's go. <laughs> but it's crazy because I mean, dude, the kids that are watching his videos have to be what, like 14? I have no idea. So I have no idea what his demographic, demographic is. is. No idea who watches vape videos. I don't know. Why? Yeah. Wh why? What? What are you watching those for? Because like I like when when weed videos were a thing, and like like I used to like browse like weed sites and stuff sometimes when I was like in high school and shit. Because weed is like a very pretty thing, you yeah. know. And if you like smoking weed, I didn't really like smoking it. Would but you I, be on like HighTimes.com or some shit? Yeah, and like okay. and like there's like websites that took pictures of different strains and stuff. Okay. <laughs> so you learn about like strains and whatever. And you know when you're like a teenager and you're like, I'm not a fan of weed at all, but I was like trying to be, you know, because you're like, it's cool. Everyone's smoking it. Like everyone likes it. Why don't I like it? I'm going to make myself like it. <laughs> so like with weed, I get that there's a culture, right? Because you watch someone smoke it. Like there's videos on YouTube of people like smoking huge bongs and stuff. Yeah. Because you're like, you watch that and you almost get like, I oh man, I want to feel like that feeling, you know? But what do you get by watching someone smoke a Vape? jewel? Yeah. <laughs> cancer. <laughs> get fucking cancer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's That's what I mean. There's Secondhand literally no cancer. positives no, from, yeah. from jeweling. Yeah. Weed, at least you get, you know, you get high. There's healing benefits. You can mm -hmm. make CBD out of mm -hmm. it. Hemp and all that shit. Mm -hmm. You can make clothes out yeah. of weed. Jewels. I, I, mean, I felt so much better when I quit jeweling. Oh, you used to jewel? Mm-hmm. It was like something that just snuck up, you know? It's like, it's like the fucking, they're so strong that it's just like you do a couple times and then you're like constantly thinking about it. The thing that pissed me off, my homie Davis, uh, dude, wouldn't even like come over to my house. Like wouldn't even hang out on my couch if like, you know, I'd go outside and smoke a cigarette because he'd be like, it's coming through the window. Da -da -da -da. Like I got to go. Wouldn't ride in my car because like if I smoke cigarettes in my car. And now he jewels all the time. It's full fucking jewels all yeah, the fucking yeah, time. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you are the biggest like <laughs> asshole about cigarettes and you're blowing this fucking shit in my face. Yeah. Like what's going on? He's yeah. like, yeah, I don't know, man. I just, you know. It's, it's just, different. It's mango. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Yeah. It didn't when I was uh a teenager though, there was these things called vanilla dreams. Okay. And they were like vanilla cigarettes. 
uh, and then they they got banned because you weren't allowed to sell shit with flavors in them. Okay, but they were like literal cigarettes that came in like a shiny gold package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, like and cloves. The, the cloves were weird because those were like wrapped in the brown or black paper, yeah. and they they always scared me because they crackled and shit. I loved I loved them. Oh really? Yeah, in college. Oh no, that but always they were, scared like, me. They're so fucking bad for you. I bet. Yeah, they have to be worse than regular cigarettes. It's right? like yeah, oh, way worse. It's like it's like a it's like a smoking like a extra strong menthol. Because you know how menthol has shit in it that numbs your throat. Okay. Or whatever. Like that's the mintiness yeah, of it yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That that's close cigarettes have that times like five. So apparently they're super super bad for you. Yeah. Hearing as soon as the, I found that, I was like, all right. Never. Hearing the snap crackle pop thing in those, I was just like, <laughs> it can't be good for you. I'm good. Yeah, I'm fucking like, good. What kind of chemical is burning right now that's <laughs> making sounds? Literally, like yeah, I don't even know. That was a huge thing though. Everyone smoked cloves. Yeah. Like growing up, it was fucking. I started smoking when I was 13 because I found a pack of unopened Marlboro Reds uh, okay. at this creek. By my house, and me and my friends smoked the whole pack in one day. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> we got really sick. <laughs> Jesus. And then Christ. the next day, we're like, we need another one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, if you're gonna do something for the first time, just go all in. That's, <laughs> that's what I always say, you know. <laughs> smoked for like you know 15 <laughs> years after that. <laughs> it's like, all right, man. If we're gonna smoke one of these, you know, we got to do the whole pack. <laughs> it's for life, dog. It's <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah. for life. And then for 10 years after yeah. that, uh, that was definitely like probably the best thing I've done uh, in all my life. Quit smoking. Quit smoking. Yeah. Did and you feel, did you, how long did it take you to feel, feel better? Uh, I, uh, I actually, I tried this thing called Chantix for a long time, which is like the pills. Uh, you take like prescription and shit. That made me feel crazy. I hated that. Uh, what ended up happening, what worked for me is I read this book called The Easy Way to Stop Smoking. It's by this dude, Alan Carr. He's dead now, but this guy smoked like four packs of cigarettes a day. He wrote it in like the 30s or 40s or, I don't know, 50s or some shit. Um, but he had smoked for like 50 years and then finally like quit. And the book, uh, the technique in, that's used in the book is called Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. And so it's like repeating subtle phrases and sentences that attack your subconscious. Okay. And like, so what it, it doesn't like scare you and like try to be like, you're going to die and all this shit. Like it'll tell you like light up a cigarette, you know, and like do the, do all these things. Um, but it's pretty much like unbrainwashing us from, you know, growing up thinking smoking school. Cause have, like, you, have you used those techniques like in just life besides NLP? Yeah. How do you think I got you on this podcast? <laughs> Cody, I was wondering really why you emailed do, me 500 you, times. You really want to do this. You really, really want to do this. Yeah. Dude, um, yeah, what you didn't see before we started this is you, him hypnotizing me. With my pocket watch is, <laughs> is for me, dude. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I have I'm not like that much of an asshole where like I would spend, you know, that guy obviously spent some time writing the book. Uh, I don't know how I would incorporate it in my daily life. Well, because like, you know, like you find yourself like there's other vices in life, and it's if it's if it's not nicotine, whatever. I always find myself like fighting cravings for you know whatever food, going out to drink when I shouldn't be yeah. right, and like it's the same type of messages that your subconscious has given you. It's like, nah, maybe you should do this, and I always feel like I could, like, you know, I quit one thing, I start doing another thing, and it's like, how do I retrain my shit to like just not need anything? anything. Like, let me just be at peace. The meditation, maybe I don't know what it what it's gonna be, but. That's why I asked that question. No, I feel you. Um, there's books on it. I, I have this book called NLP for Dummies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've, I've read that. I just don't know how to like... A lot of magicians uh, use it though. Okay. Like it's it's huge and like in the magic field. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty fucking crazy. But yeah, anyways, I read that book uh, and I had to read it like three or four times. But dude, my thing was always when I'd get drunk after not smoking for yeah. like eight months. Oh, yeah. And someone would be like, yo, you want a cigarette? And I'd be like, yeah. Um, and then after like two or three years of just like torturing myself, I was just like, all right, fuck this. Um, but it would be cool to learn NLP and use it on my podcast. So you, you use it against other people? You can. Oh, it can be I weaponized. See. Oh, it can, but weaponized NLP. We, weapon, huh. Buy merch. Buy merch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Subscribe. Uh, but the weird thing would be like, I feel like you'd have to have access to somebody a lot in yeah. order to, in order to like, you know, manipulate them. Yeah. It'd be like the, um, Fucking, I don't mean to, you know, pull out the old office reference, but now I'm going through the season right now. And like one of Live the episodes- Live your life, man. Speak your truth. <laughs> one of the episodes was he like trains Dwight to like request a mint every time the bell plays on the computer. You know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, yes. Like that type of shit. It definitely is. Uh, Slowly conditioning someone. Yeah, it's just like mental conditioning. Um, but yeah, that works for me. I've, get, I've sent that book because I have like a PDF to, I don't know, 20 people. And- 
it's worked for a lot of them. So hmm. that's, that was fucking cool. I know people got hypnot like they, they get hypnotized and shit to quit stuff too. Yeah, which is something that uh, Rob Deerdick always talked about. That was like the pinnacle of his of his success came after he saw a hypnotist. Really? Yeah, he went and got hypnotized and then like had all of these ideas. Uh, I like listened to this interview and um, yeah, this girl told me about it because she like knew him and stuff. I was like, I'm gonna go see his hypnotist and get super successful. And I was like, good it, luck, good luck. It, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> must not have gone like, and seen or just, or just work hard. I don't know. <laughs> work really fucking hard and stay busy. But, yeah. uh, but hypnotism kind of freaks me out. Yeah, me too. The fact that like I could just be, you know, gone. and Because that's one of the things that I, I think it's real. Oh, you, you know? do? Okay. I, I don't know. Like I see when people get hypnotized. Well, you, like, you know, like when you go to like, like no, Disneyland or like Knott's Berry Farm and they're like, who wants to come up on stage? And then like, they make someone like fucking moo and like act like a cat and shit. Yeah, do you think that's real? That's see, that's where I'm skeptical. I'm a huge skeptic. Okay, so I'm like, mm, bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean. But then again, if it happened to me, I would have no recollection. I just don't think that my mind would allow me to get hypnotized. <laughs> okay, I think it's like so, like my bullshit meters too up all the time that I'd be like, don't fall for it. Don't <laughs> fucking fall for it. There's a hypnotist listening right listening right now. That's like, oh, you. <laughs> I'll hit the shit out I of you. I got a DM from this fucking, uh, what, not a psychiatrist, a uh, fucking, oh my God. Uh, they tell the future. Oh, uh, <laughs> why can't I say this right? A psychic. Yeah, a yeah, psych yeah. yeah. Okay. It's easier than psychiatrist. You said psychiatrist. I was like, that's what it is. I can't think of anything else. I can't else. either. Um, today, th by the way, best mark, if you're a fucking psychic, Go on Instagram, send this DM out to like 300 people a day. Your clientele will, will boost. But I got this DM today and the psychic said, um, hey, would love, would love, uh, you know, to chat for a quick second. If you're down for a consultation, I see a lot of things happening for you. <laughs> and part of me was like, Oh, are they good things <laughs> or are they bad things? Because if Hell it's yeah, bad, let's consult. I want to know. Let's do it. But like for real. And then, you know, and then I'm like, fuck, does this, does this lady know something that I should know? <laughs> you know, like is something bad going to happen? And I'm like, damn, that's fucking effective marketing. That's a funny thought that she's just cruising Instagram pages, predicting people's futures. No, definitely. No, like, like, definitely. And then I had to like talk myself off a ledge. Like, yo, this, this girl is sending out 300 DMs a oh, day. Yeah, yeah, for being, sure. Like, I see something. Yeah. I see something happening. It's funny to, to think of that as real though. Like she's literally just like going on people's pages and be like, now there's some good things in store for this person. <laughs> Swiping the next person. That person is probably going to die. <laughs> My whole thing with psychics is like, dude, if you're a psychic, why do they always have the shittiest little like corner shop? Like they share like a four, you know, yeah. like a four spot. You got to go up some stairs and it's like in some sketchy little. <laughs> There's like a cardboard cubicle. sign that says like, you know, fortune, $10. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yo, you should have looked ahead. Yeah. Invested in the neon sign. I was just, I was just about to say, <laughs> maybe, maybe predict the stock market. Yeah. How about that? Make some coin. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's just that's just not real. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I there's a you know what's the fucking shit where you talk to dead people? What's that? Uh, mediums. Mediums. Yeah. Do you hear that? It's our phones blown up. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm just super. Popular. You're just getting, getting fucking blown up, tons dude. Tons of calls and texts. A and lot stuff. of psychics are DMing right now. <laughs> I threw my phone go. over there. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw it out the window. Yeah. Um. Uh, you believe in mediums? No, I I don't. But like, it's it's easy to like make people believe in that shit. Like, if you're like generic enough, but in like a strategic way. That's where I think, yeah. There's definitely tricks to where like you know you can ask very vague questions and depend. I think it's all about the person, man. That with with uh with fucking hypnosis as well. It's like there's certain people that are super. I don't want to say gullible, but you know, they're like the perfect kind of yeah, they're the perfect victims. Yeah. You know, like, yes, yes, I had a, a guy in my life that died. Yeah. And then you could just. I was mooing on stage. I wasn't me. <laughs> Someone was making me moo. I shit my pants, but I was hypnotized. <laughs> I swear. That one was me. That I was, was really <laughs> drunk. It was horrible. <laughs> it was fucking horrible. Um, have you ever been? You've never been hypnotized? No. Okay. Never. And you've never been to a psychic? Never. Oh, no. Uh, we went. To, no, actually, I haven't. We went to one. There's one. There's just like one on the boardwalk in Venice. It's like this chick that has like an apartment like right on the shit. And so she does it like on her front steps. And like, it's, she's a palm reader. And so like three or four people in the group did it. And I was like, I'm not doing it. Like just on the off chance that it's real. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not See, trying to. 
There's one thing. My uncle, my uncle's into magic and shit. Uh, and he had this girlfriend who did tarot cards. Okay. And when I was like 19, here's the one thing that really freaks me out. She read my palms. We're one, we're all smoking weed at his house and like getting fucking baked, right? And she's like, hey, let me take your cards and all this shit. And I was like, whatever, cool. And um, and then she like reads my palms and she's like, All right, um, you're gonna make like a lot of money. She's like, but then you're gonna lose it all. And I was like, Oh shit. And this was like before music and everything, right? So then like music, da 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 toured, made a lot of money, spent all my advance and like you know, spent all my money. Yeah. So for that, I'm like, damn, she was kind of right. Maybe you did that because she said it. You think? Maybe. That's what maybe fucks. she was conditioning you. NLP. <laughs> she was <laughs> this has been like years in the making. <laughs> and she's gonna pop back up and be like, hey, you're successful again. <laughs> Let's read it. <laughs> I take five yeah, percent, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this would happen. <laughs> but that always freaked that always freaked me the fuck out as I was like, damn, she kind of she saw that one coming. When you're when you're in the in the studio, I'm just to bring it back to music, because this is a question I meant to ask. Sorry, I'm fucking taking over. No, <laughs> dude, it's your podcast. <laughs> uh I because I'm just curious of what like when you're when you're writing shit for other people are you writing hooks are you writing melodies are you writing lyrics or everything. everything well look so you're, it's, you're it's, just part of the process you're in there it's a case by look every artist is different it's yeah. you know it, it's a unique uh it's unique to every artist um but yeah i mean you know a lot of times it depends like you'll be in with a producer and then the artist and sometimes the artist will bring in an idea sometimes like you know, I'll have a song that I wrote and recorded, you know, three months ago. Mm. And then we bring it in and like change the verses and like switch the lines of the hook and, you know, all this other shit. I know like two of the Paris songs, uh, cause I did it with this dude, me and Taz Taylor. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. We, we executive produced the whole thing. So two of the songs me and Taz made at my house, like, a, I don't know, like six or seven months before I even met Paris. And then when we hung out with him, we changed everything and, you know, okay. we ended up like tailoring it, you know, with yeah. him. Yeah, that's um, tight. And he retracts everything and then yep. you, are you producing too? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I started producing like two, a year and a half, two years ago. Fuck yeah, me too. You did? Yeah. Awesome. I yeah. just finished a song today. It's, I, I love it. I don't know. And it's do you produce all my, of the Tiny Me Gang stuff? I don't, know, But okay. I, I, uh, that's our, like Christian and Spock, they do the shit that like we release on Spotify because that stuff is all like I wasn't you know I'm I'm still not great but like I'm I'm getting better. Are you working sure. with artists? Uh, like on my beats? Yeah, I sent a couple to this dude. His name's the Cosmic Lad. He's like a just a, a a dude that hit me up on Twitter. I think he was just like a fan of the podcast or something. And I started uploading like just as a uh, as an exercise for myself to just continue making shit. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, sitting on my computer, it's like, oh, I could play Fortnite or I, yeah, I could open up Ableton and fucking start a new beat from scratch or I could play Fortnite. And so this made me like do music instead of playing video games. It was just like, I'm just going to upload beats on this like random SoundCloud and whoever wants to download them can download them if they're good enough, whatever. Maybe someone will rap over them one day. And this kid, he's super fucking talented. He's awesome. Took a couple of my beats and rapped over them and would send them back. And I was like, oh my God, this is a whole different animal. Having someone actually use your beat, it's a different yes. song now. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even hear my beat. I hear a song, you know? Yeah. This is amazing. And so that was my first, like, uh, I guess, like, opportunity to hear someone, like, over my own beats. That wasn't me, you That's know? That's awesome. Yeah, dude, when I'm playing video games, I always think, like, damn, I could be making music right now or, like, you know, I could be making a beat right now. Yeah. And then I feel like a huge piece of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, That's right, always a nagging thing me, in my uh, head. Open up my laptop. Yeah. And, uh, put the controller down. Yeah. Have you played Apex? I, I have. So I watched Noel play... And as soon as I was, cause I was like, I hear all this buzz and he was like, I have it downloaded. I was like, play it, play it. it. Dude, it looks so dope. It. it looks like Gears of War, which is a game I used to play all the time. And I love the fact that it's first person. I'm going to play. I, I, the thing is, if I download it, then, then I'm just going to get re-addicted to that shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop making music. Stop again. making beats. Yeah. yeah. What made you want to start making music? It was like, you know, it was like one of those things that it was just one of the areas that I had never done. And I was like, I want to just like, through this whole fuck, through the whole entertainment thing, the last six years of my life it has really been me learning about like how creative of a person I actually am. Yeah. Growing up, you know, it was always like math, computer science, software. Like I'm an analytical guy. I'm a left brain dude. That was always my thing. And then this, like doing this stuff made me realize that like, no, I, I, I am way more creative than I think. And so music was one of those areas where I was like, I've always been intimidated by it. It's always been something I've wanted to try. Um, I've always loved music. I mean, everyone, 
Who's the Who's the guy that's I like? You know what? Actually, I hate music. <laughs> I've always just been like I've always loved music, been really passionate about it, but I've never like I've always been too intimidated. Like in college, I was a DJ, but I would download Ableton and would open it up and it would just intimidate the shit out of me. So I would close it and just forget about it. And um, so finally, like that shit with Jake Paul came out and I was like, I think I could just at least try and make a beat and record myself, at least try. And now that I'm under like the comedy umbrella, like the safety net of yeah, comedy, yeah. it's like I can try it without being too cringy. Even though I look back and I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck were we doing? Um, so that's kind of what made me start. And then like, then I started tackling Ableton, finally was you know, conquered the the learning curve up to the point where it was like, okay, now it's like fun. And then just now would just, I mean, now for me, it's just watching YouTube videos about other for people sure. producing and then yeah. cloning what they do and making it my own. I watch YouTube videos when I'm making music every day. Yeah. Because like, there's just something I want to I want to do and I'm like, how the fuck do I do it? Go <clears> oh my God, it. dude, it's crazy. It's and that's why all these 12-year-old producers are coming up because it's like the, the sheer depth of information they yes. have. Like... If I was 14 and wanted to make a beat, I would do the same shit. Go on <laughs> yeah. YouTube, watch seven hours of videos, and like just be a savant. You just live with your parents. You have no responsibilities. Yeah, exactly. You just literally make bills all yeah, day. Yeah. You don't have to do anything yeah. else. But that's, dude, it's it's honestly the few. Like, do you want do you want to work with artists? Is that something yeah. that you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you feel comfortable with? I would with? love to take it more seriously in the future. I think it's like, it's the more I do it, the more I realize how close it is to programming. Mm. It's the same it must shit. be tight it's, though it's, to have that analytical brain because you can look at data and be like, yo, this song is really working here. This shit is here. Like I'm, j I don't have that. Okay. Like I can't look at like analytics and be like, oh, this means that I should do this. Yeah, or like, yeah, yeah. you know, like my brain, like I look at numbers and I'm like, oh fuck. You know? I more mean like, like recognizing patterns in, in the music, like what's what's actually working together, what's not, you know what I mean? Like when yeah. you're building a beat, it's just really just fucking patterns. And 100%. it's the same thing with programming. It's taking chunks, reusing them, making them more like extensible for other areas of the project. It's the exact same with music. It's mm. like- And you said you're on Ableton? Yeah. Dope, I'm on FL, I'm on Fruity Loops and I'm on Logic. Okay. Um, but FL was like the first thing that really, it, it's what simplified producing for me. Yeah. It was like, it's where like I could look at it like a video game. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's why most people start with FL, FL Studio. Yeah. Because you just have that nice little. <laughs> I started on GarageBand, dude. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. like how I yeah. first. And, you know, like Logic is just GarageBand on crack. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, producing uh, opened up so many new doors for me. And like it definitely reignited my love. Uh, of making music. Okay. You know, because like I used to go into the studio and I'd work with producers and I'd be like, yo, that sounds really dope. Da, 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 da. But I never trusted myself enough to be like, I can pick up this guitar and I can play this and it it's good enough to be released. Yeah. You know, my thing was always like, oh, okay, if I do this, then we'll just get a real guitar player in here and yeah. then they can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I kind of was like, hey, this is this is dope. And then like other people started being like, yo, this is fucking cool. That's when it was like, you kind of sure. you kind of find like that's the beauty of of doing shit yourself, is that like like I love working with other people, like when we're in the studio with our producers and stuff like that. It's it's so much fun, but it's a totally different experience than when I'm in my studio alone, yeah, building something from scratch. It's like a whole different beast. I'm my own worst enemy though, so like sometimes okay. I need someone there that I trust. Okay. To be like, yo, is this complete trash? Yeah. Or in the, no, no, it's dope. Look, put this under here. And it's, and then I'm like, oh, fuck. I also overcomplicate things way too much. Okay. Where like, I'll feel like a song or, you know, whatever. This is in all areas of my life, but like specifically producing, like where I think it needs 20 tracks and it can be done in like seven. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh shit, I just didn't think of it like mm -hmm. that. Um, and so simplifying things sometimes is, is often the key for me. Because mm -hmm. my brain is just, Jumbled all it's the like time. Needs a hundred. No, literally, literally. I'm like, uh, it's not a real beat if it doesn't have 200 sounds. <laughs> More pads. <laughs> Fill it out. <laughs> it's just like fucking <laughs> trumpets. <laughs> We're making ska beats now. <laughs> trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the trumpet player that like gets the call, like like to go into like the studio for the first ska band ever. Yeah, he's like, "Yo, man, so like we're a punk band, but we really just want, yeah, we just want some horns yeah, over yeah. this part." <laughs> <laughs> we're a super hardcore punk band, but if you could just anarchy and go, fucking trumpets, <laughs> go dumb on the sax, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everything you stand for, <laughs> but I love your horns. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that that uh, that's interesting, man. Yeah, but now I mean, John Feldman to bring it back to ska, he's producing like Twenty One Pilots and Five Seconds of Summer, okay. and like all these crazy uh, you know, pop acts. So I mean, it's cool to see the progression, and that gives me yo. Watching somebody like Feldy, you, and you know, I mean, he's pretty, I mean, the used and like, you know, all of like Newfound Glory and fucking all those bands, uh, you know, he produced all those records. But to see like how he was in, you know, a band for so long, toured with No Doubt, had a huge career of his own, and then like went into the production angle and like, you know, just got to like pretty much craft and shape, you know, the sound of, of like the music that I grew up listening to. That for me is inspiring mm. to be like, damn, like you can just channel it into a different, you know, yeah. into a, like a different place. Totally. Um, and that's what's been really cool about like working with other people and shit, which is what I'm sure is dope with you giving your beats, you know, to people and hearing them yeah. make songs with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's been amazing, man. And I'm just, I kind of keep doing it. Don't keep making stop. like comedy music for that's myself. That's something I've always wanted to do, man. Yeah. Because that's how I started. That's literally how I started rapping was like I freestyle stupid shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm not Weird Al. So I was like, fuck, <laughs> I should start, you know, ra <laughs> rapping about songs. Yeah. <laughs> like, I gotta my... start rapping about drugs. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like, all, yeah, it was just like rapping about like boners and dicks and fucking, yeah. you know, shit. And yeah. then I was like, all right, this probably, people probably won't listen to this. Yeah. Um, Even though now that's just like its whole subgenre of its you own. Listen to like Lil Dicky, you know, Dicky yeah, is like, like Young Gravy and stuff like yep. that. They're all like half comedy. Yeah. It's awesome though. Like that's kind of where we're trying to be too. Is not like, not like purely like comedy, but it's listenable. Mm. You know, some shit that you can like vibe out to. But it's also like, oh, if you listen to the lyrics, it's actually kind of funny. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's something that uh, I've always wanted to do. And so anyone that can do it well, I have a lot of respect for. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, dude, me too. I feel not like, us. Yeah. <laughs> so me too. You're like fuck us, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude. Thanks again so much for coming, man. Oh yeah, I feel like yeah, this podcast. Sure. Uh, it was enlightening. Yeah, to say the no, least. it was awesome. Um, Thanks for Tiny Meat me. Gang, uh, tell everyone, I mean, yeah, tell everyone your socials, tell everyone to, where to check it out. Cody Co. on everything, TMG, Tiny Meat Gang, check that shit out. Podcast is called Tiny Meat Gang. Yeah. Tiniest of meats. Mm -hmm. um, Cody, thank you, man. Thanks for having me, Appreciate bro. Appreciate it. Peace. Mm-hmm.